Hello and welcome back to Reality Check, the show that delves into the technological fiction of video games and asks, hey science, where is this incredible, fun and probably very expensive thing in real life? Come on science, get a move on. Today, Anthem's Javelins. Try again. There we go. There is no doubt that mech suits totally exist today, but they're a bit less of this and more of this. That's just a weird, slow car. Get it together, science. Okay, that settles it. We're gonna have to build one of these ourselves. However, I'm gonna need some help because the only material I know how to build with is Lego. And I don't see how a Lego mech suit is remotely possible. My name is Jerry Burrows. I call myself uh, the brick engineer. Impressive credentials. I stand corrected. However, something tells me that that suit would not last very long in a firefight with the Dominion. So, to find out what materials we should use to build our very own combat-ready javelin, I drafted in Dr. Suze Kundu, brick engineer. I mean, material scientist. Yes, that's the real thing. The javelins in Anthem are made of metal, which is great because metals generally are incredibly robust and they can be shaped to create panels incredibly easily. The ideal kind of metal in this situation would be something that is strong but also low in density. So a material like titanium would be ideal for that. However, if we're thinking of impact protection, there could be other ways that you can achieve this with a cool bit of material science. There's a group of materials known as non-Newtonian materials, which are generally made of particles that flow past one another in normal wearing situations, but on impact, the particles lock together. In doing so, the material briefly turns into a solid and the impact dissipates across the material rather than through it. Non-Newtonian materials, huh? Now they sound pretty sci-fi, but they're actually already incorporated into some modern day body armors for that solid to liquid transformative property. However, there's a very good chance that you have encountered such a thing before as well. Ever mixed cornstarch and water together and then hit it with a hammer? Just me? Well, that's a non-Newtonian fluid. You can even fill a swimming pool with this stuff and jump around on it, because why not? However, non-Newtonians are still pretty bulky. So if we want to maintain the agility of our javelins, we're gonna need something that is still super strong, but is also lighter. Any options, Suze? So everyone's favorite wonder material, graphene, could be the answer to this. It's a two-dimensional material made just of carbon atoms in a one atom thick layer. It's a little bit difficult to work with graphene at the moment, but it does have properties that we want to make use of. Low density, high tensile strength. If we wanted to make a suit out of this, I reckon the best way forward would be to combine the powers of some of these different materials, perhaps embedding some of these graphene layers within a non-Newtonian foam so that you can create a material that is light but incredibly protective. Okay, so we have our composite material. It's light and it's tough, but we are only puny humans with limited muscles. So how on earth are we gonna be strong enough to move inside these suits? Well, cutting edge soldier tech like the Talos and Prowler augmentation system utilize exoframes to give the operator the ability to go further and even lift more. So is building something like this into our javelin the answer? An exoframe is certainly one way that we could give the wearer of the javelin a bit more strength and stamina. However, there are some limitations. These are incredibly bulky and they're very power intensive. So we could use some quirkier science to get around this. There's an incredible area of research that's looking into artificial muscles. Regular muscles work by being made of lots and lots of fibers that are able to shorten and then lengthen, thus creating movement. In artificial muscle, you can create this effect in a couple of different ways. The first way is to take a carbon nanotube and twist it up until it's incredibly tight. This twist wants to stay very short and when it's pulled apart, it wants to then pull back into place. So that can induce some movement. Another way that you can achieve this is again by using these carbon nanotubes, but by filling them with paraffin. The carbon nanotubes are made of a certain number of carbon atoms and when they're heated by increasing the temperature or by inducing a very small electric current, the paraffin inside these carbon nanotubes expands. As it expands, the tube moves outwards, 
but because it's made of a certain amount of material, it has to therefore shorten to accommodate this expansion of the paraffin inside. By using any one of these types of technology, you can create panels around the wearer within a suit that can enhance their performance. Much like its long and pointy namesake, a javelin is at its best when zooming through the air. That's right, these mech suits can fly. And we might be closer to this reality than you think. Enter British engineer Richard Browning and his team at Gravity Industries. Cool, huh? This jet suit can reach speeds of up to 32 miles per hour and heights of 12,000 feet. Less impressive though is its flight time of five to 10 minutes, which is due in part to its 27 kilograms of weight. And that's without fuel. Let's just say missions from Fort Tarsus would barely get started if that's all the flight time we had to play with. Suze, what's your take on this one? On a planet like Earth, we're hurtling towards the ground at 9.81 meters per second. In order to escape that, we need to generate a lot of thrust. In order to do that and make it as efficient as possible, we need to be as light as possible. So we can get around that problem by incorporating these light materials into the suits, such as the graphenes and the foams that we've already talked about. However, one more thing we need to consider is the amount of heat being generated when we create this thrust. We need to make sure that this excess heat doesn't reach vital components in the suit. So we need a material that doesn't just conduct heat, but can direct it away from these components. A perfect material would be something like graphite. It's made of lots and lots of these graphene sheets layered up one on top of the other to create a highly ordered structure. So not only can it get rid of that heat, it can move it well away from places where it might cause a problem. Aha, so that's why I plummet to the ground whenever I allow my javelin to overheat. Good to know, clearly needs more graphite. So tell me, what's your take on creating a real life javelin? Do you think that with the right mix of advanced enough materials, we will eventually get there? Or is this one technology that the fundamental laws of physics might deny us? Let me know in the comments down below or by tweeting to me directly at camfrasrob. My huge thanks to Dr. Suze Kundu for her expertise on this one and also thanks to you for watching.